For all my Alcorn State fans out there, I know daggone well y'all sitting on the edge of y'all seats trying to figure out, man, are we going to pull this game out tonight or what? Are we going to end up going one and three? And in, now that we're in the West Division of the SWAC Conference, are we going to be down at the bottom of the totem pole trying to fight our way back up to get back into the get back into the SWAC Championship coming to the end of the season? Well, you know what? Hey, Coach McNair had that look on his face like, Hey, y'all, relax. I got this. We, we, we got this. Everything's going to be all right. Y'all just need to relax. Trust in the process. And guess what? They went ahead and brought this thing on home. Coach going to go ahead and jump on in this thing right now because I got a few things that I got to get off my chest with this game because I don't know about you, but this game kind of reminds me of another big game that took place. Let me see if you guys remember exactly. Let me see if you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down. About to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and also you can follow us on social media. The links are listed down below in the description. And for all my leaders out there, y'all know the drill, y'all know the routine. Hey, make sure you guys as well hit that notification bell, like, comment, share these videos, and also tap in a friend or two. Tell them to come on in. It's number positive vibes over here. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So without further ado, Coach going to go ahead, tap on in this thing, and give you the post-game breakdown of what we saw tonight between the Alcorn State Braves and the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. Man, I'm telling you right now, I did not expect this game to start off nor end in the manner in which it did. It helped me understand one thing. Me of whenever I go into a game, to make sure that we got a backup plan to the backup plan and make sure we're able to adjust the backup plan so that we can go ahead and get the sure gonna, I'm sure the Braves are going to have to do that as far as we're getting things in order so that they're able to get out, get out, get in games and compete early and often and not have to fight from behind like they did tonight. When I saw the Golden Lions on the initial drive, the first drive, of the, the opening drive of the game, take that ball and drive it down the field and score a touchdown. I'm sitting here like, Lord have mercy. This is about to get out of control quick. And upon them scoring, upon them scoring their first touchdown, I, like I've stated before, I, I, I always state this. We got to make sure that we remember our assignments. We make sure we do the little things because little mental mistakes will be cost. That mental mistake cost the Braves seven points. Man about to go ahead and put some points on the board. He throws, he throws an out route. Excuse me, he throws, he throws a pass. Throw, look like he's throwing a screen to the outside. Number 71, Farmer, Zion Farmer for the Golden Lions. He tips the ball to himself, catches the ball, take the ball to the house for seven points. I'm sitting here like, Lord have mercy. What in the world? Are they in the play? Watching Coach, watching coach uh, McNair on the sideline, he still had the same look like usual. Like, hey, don't worry about it. Relax. Re re the game ain't over with yet. Relax. Relax. Gotta give it up to the Golden Lions teams. Taekwon Fleming and the Golden Lions special teams crew. I mean, they were the kryptonite for the Alcorn State Braves tonight. Causing, I mean, you got block punts, you got pooch kicks that's taken back down the field, get and they're stopped on the two yard line. Like I said, you got uh, uh, block punts in which uh, they pick up the ball to score. I mean, you just got all kind of crazy stuff that's going on. And again, you, you, you're just trying to figure out what, what, where's the mindset of the Braves? Are they in this game? What's really going on? And then all of a sudden, you know what? They score their first touchdown. They, they, they put their first touchdown on the board. But Skyler Perry like, hey, man, y'all scored seven points. That's fine. Guess what? He said, I'm going to show you I can ball with the best of them as well. And he did everything that Coach Gamble could have asked him to do out there on the field without throwing the game away and giving the Braves extra opportunities to score points on the board. He didn't throw any interceptions, which was Golden great. The Lions running back crew, they ran the ball 28 times for 87 yards. And you had um, Crossley. He scored two touchdowns. In the game, Perry threw the ball 39 times, complete 24 for 316 yards, no interceptions, and one touchdown. But I'm going to tell you right now, that daggone bomb pass that he threw to number three, Josh Wilkes, who had man on coverage, was a thing of beauty. He dropped that bad boy in the bread basket. I mean, like, like uh, And I mean, it beautiful. It, it was a beautiful pass. The Golden Lions, they set themselves up to have the momentum and be in position to win the game. Now, they did have, the, the Golden Lions did have nine penalties for 78 yards. They went four for 12 on third downs, and they went 0 for 2 on fourth down. Those two fourth downs that they did not convert, the last one was costly because that was the one that ended the game. I believe the one previously, uh, they did not convert that fourth down, which uh, when they went for it, instead of Coach Gamble kicking that field goal, Coach Gamble, you need to put them points on the board, Coach. I'm sorry. I, I'm just putting it out there. I'm calling it the way I see it. Coach, you should have put them points on the board. You put them points on the board, you'd have got this W. Or 
Think, things might have went the same. Things could have possibly went a different direction, but I honestly believe the Golden Lions would have got that W tonight. I believe that was the pivotal moment that caused the Golden Lions to start reeling and start, you know, start reeling in which the Braves were able to get that momentum to get back in the game. But watching um watching 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 the Golden Lions force the Braves uh to make costly mistakes throughout the game. I mean, you you never it's like you just never know whenever the ball is teed up and kicked off for the game to start. You don't know how things are going to go. You just got to fight through. And in this instance, the Braves, they went into halftime and they made some adjustments because you know what? They only had seven points at the half. When you looked at that score at halftime, you sat there and said to yourself, man, Jesus, are, 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 are the Braves going to come back out and play tonight? What are they going to do? Or, or is this going to get worse? And the, like I said, the Braves went in. They made major adjustments with the big uglies up front. They made them aware that they needed to get their behinds together and pay attention to that blitz. Remember, guys, I say that every week in the pregame. The big uglies got to pay attention to the blitz packages that's, co that's coming on. Everybody's drawing up something real sexy and exotic, hoping that they can catch the lineman off guard and they're not paying any attention to what's happening. For instance, uh, the delayed blitz. These delayed blitzes are coming. I mean, they, they're coming like like rapid fire all of a sudden now because a lot of times these guards, the guards are getting so caught up in wanting to help the center with uh, with the nose guard. Guards got to keep in mind that, hey, you got a hand. You use that hand to go ahead and keep that, that nose guard from trying to shoot the gap on it, shoot the A gap on the inside of you. Hit them with that hand so that you go ahead and get them off balance to go the opposite direction. And that way, when that daggone linebacker decides which A gap he's going to shoot, either A a between the A between the uh, the A gaps between the center, or if they might decide to go B gap because you've already shifted your body, getting into committing to blocking that nose guard. Guess what? We got a problem. So that's why I always say the guards the guards got to pay attention to what's going on out there on the field. But you know what? The Braves made their, the Braves made the adjustment being down twenty six to seven in the third quarter. They came back out. They got things in order. Uh, like I said, they were finally able to get. Uh, Duffy going. Duffy put his staff on the game in which he scored two touchdowns in the second half. Not to mention, he ran the ball 23 times, 444 yards. Felix Triggerman Harper. You are a hey, Felix Triggerman Harper. You are truly boxing off putting that ball out there on the field and you just trusted your receivers. I mean, Jesus Christ. This thing, hey, the, the, the painting that the painting that you painted last night, the second half, and the second half of this game was a thing of beauty. That pass that you threw to um, CJ Bowler, he had five receptions on the night uh, for 151 yards, one touchdown. LaCharles, excuse me, LaCharles Pringle, I've been waiting on these young men to break out, have him a big breakout game, and he finally got that tonight where he had four receptions for 126 yards and two touchdowns. Trigger man threw the ball 32 times, completing 16 for 368 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. They played a much better game overall tonight. Now they did they did get in the red they did get in the red zone three times and they scored all three times getting in the red zone. That was how they was able to get back in this game. They were seven to sixteen on third down. They were one or two on fourth down. Now UAPB tonight they had a buffer going into the fourth quarter, thinking that since they had scored that last touchdown, everything was all right. Like there's no way in the world the Braves are gonna come back and get this game. Was definitely a classic. Not putting points on the board will always will forever come back and haunt you, especially when you're dealing with a team like the Alcorn State Braves where you know they're gonna fight you to, to they're gonna fight you tooth and nail to until the last seconds on the clock are gone. You gotta understand, you gotta understand who you're playing against. And I think that in this instance, this game kind of reminds me of that Atlanta the, the Atlanta Falcons game versus uh the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl, in which Tom Brady, they were down with 25 to 3 and came back and won this game. And again, had the Falcons kicked the field goal, they would have won. It's almost like deja vu from um, the spring, the spring uh, SWAT championship game. All you had to do was kick that field goal. You'd have beat Alabama AM in the in the SWAT championship. It didn't happen. But you know what? Like I said before, I'm sure these young men they see that they can get out and compete on a high level against anybody. So I look forward to them putting it all together again next week, getting themselves right and getting ready to get out there and get that W. But until next time, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, like these videos, comment on these videos, share these videos. And also, guys, remember, be the one and lead.